fine. I know, right? <laughs> If we don't bore you, it could be less. <laughs> if we're boring, it could be I two minutes, hair. three minutes. Thank you. All purple. I keep playing around with different colors. I'm like, now I have to do like, like different layers of purple because that's just how life is now. It's very fun. Hey, how long does it take for each? It's like three hours. Three to get hours the whole to get all done? Yeah. That's cool. Great. Um, did you want to start off with another question or anyone else have a question to start off? Can you tell us about your character? So I'm going by Nick and not Ned. <laughs> That's pretty key. Mm -hmm. now I play Ned Nickerson, and in our version we're calling him Nick. He goes by Nick. Is it Nick Nickerson then? I've been doing that. I've been doing that. So even in some auditions, some auditions though, uh, some uh, interviews like this, I kept going, yeah, I play uh, Nick Nederson. Nick, no, Nick N Nickerson. No, Ned Nickerson. Yeah, it's complicated. But Nick, keep it simple. Nick. Um, he's an out-of-towner. He comes from Florida himself. He finds himself in Horseshoe Bay. He finds himself in a relationship of sorts, a complicated relationship with uh, Nancy. Uh, and he's got a wee bit of a past to him. And we find out what that is as we go along. He might have deeper roots to the community than he initially lets on. Um, and he evolves and we find out more and more and more. Without giving too much away. Mm -hmm. play Ace. Uh, and he works at the diner with Nancy and a couple of her friends. He washes dishes there. And yes, he's a local. So Ace knows about he knows about the town, he knows the history, he knows the legends, he knows the, the folklore. He's ready to share it. So that's the most that you like he can the most you can share about um, him right now is that he is a dishwasher at the diner and so like there's like is there a mystery behind him as well that we're not supposed to know yet or is there like a deeper layer that well I think the great part about the show is as we're solving this overarching mystery throughout the season you are learning more about the characters so we're like unlocking checkpoints and missions and things throughout but then you're also going deeper because things get more complicated as you learn more about everybody and all their connections so it's um it kind of grows in all dimensions as we move forward were you familiar with the books that is a classic how did you feel when you picked the stars i was very familiar with them i knew where they were in the library and i knew <laughs> uh, what a what an important part of uh, our culture that they've been for several different generations and it's a really cool aspect to it how many people have some sort of orientation to Nancy Drew or, uh, whether they were reading the books you know when they first came out or reading later iterations of the books with different authors or playing the computer games you know throughout the 90s like so many different people have an orientation to it so it's it's really um, an honor to be a part of it in this iteration what he said. <laughs> uh, no, I, I read a couple of books growing up, but yeah, obviously it's such a cultural touchstone for so many people. I'm kind of surprised when we meet people that's, that don't know what Nancy Drew is. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I thought everyone knew what that was. Uh, I think they're the rarity, though. Yeah, yeah, they're the exception. Yeah, yeah, the exception rather than the definitely. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it's, been, it's great to be part of something that's already so established, and hopefully we uh, keep those guys who are big Nancy Drew fans and attract a whole bunch of new people to, to this wonderful character. World. The show is called Nancy Drew, but it seems like it's, it seems like it's an ensemble. <clears throat> How would you to characterize that balance? Does it, as you know, actors on the show, does it feel like an ensemble, or does it feel like Nancy's show with like supporting characters? I think hopefully it feels like it feels like an ensemble, but obviously Nancy is the main attraction, right? Um, but hopefully, and we play around with that as well. What, when does the group, when does it work as a group and when does it not work as a, as a group, for Nancy in particular? When does she need to go solo and when is it good for her to have some help? Um, but I think, yeah, I think we, we're definitely an ensemble. It feels like that. It feels like we all have characters that all have rich and complex pasts and we'll find out about that and how we, we all intermingle in the present as well and how those relationships kind of unfold. It's, it's quite exciting and the writers are definitely given us lots, lots to play with. Yeah, the, I mean, the writing's no slouch and certainly there aren't any one-dimensional characters, I think, that are going on right now. But that said, I mean, you go home with Nancy Drew. The show's about Nancy Drew and the, you know, 
those balances will ebb and flow depending on what the story dictates. So. Because she does get the voiceover. Are there any like structural changes where like I know you guys were still in early days, but where you might get flashbacks of other people's past, or you might get to do a voiceover? might have been a voiceover. Some, some of us might have <laughs> got a chance to do a little voiceover here and there. But Nancy's the only one that probably talks directly to the audience, right? I think any other voiceovers are... She's the only one that kind of breaks the fourth wall. Other voiceovers are going to be contained in the episode so far. But who knows? Of course, that's all to be played with and explored and see what's going on. It's a good question for <laughs> those people, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, we just do what we're doing. Yeah, we just have to sign and wrap up. I was like, I have another question, but I don't want to get y'all in trouble. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, so you just like mentioned, like whenever you're talking about the story, talking about it in a way about like a like a game, you're like there's missions that are unlocked and like you work through it. How do you approach the acting in the show? Do you also approach it from like I have a mission and this is what my target and this is how I'm gonna do it, or do you have a different mindset behind your character and how it's gonna portray him? I don't consciously apply any of that, yeah. but I'm sure um, there's an aspect in like, you're on a mission right now with that microphone and this question, so everybody's got a mission at some point in the day. I might have to, you know, go get a coffee in a little bit, and that'll be my mission then. Um, yeah. yeah, no, similarly, I think, I think we, there's a fine balance between being educated about what's going on, but also being a bit ignorant, so that you can stay present and kind of be in the threat in the moment now rather than thinking too far ahead or whatever so um, yeah that's, it's, a, it's a fine for me anyway it's a fine balance because um, I've also got a very analytical brain so I kind of want to know all the information but it's a new skill of learning to let go and just take what comes your way and work, work with that 